Hey, Phil, what's going on there? I'm stuck in the sand. You're stuck in the sand. Ten-year-old Philip Gomp dreamed of becoming a scientist. He loved exploring and figuring things out. Oh, you got out. But shortly after a 2009 trip to a Polk County, Florida lake, his dream ended with a bedtime headache. The next morning when my husband went to check on him, he was very hard to wake up. Took him to the pediatric ward and they did a spinal tap right away. That spinal tap confirmed Philip had meningitis. Philip's parents are doctors. They knew it was serious. I knew what was going to happen. I knew I just had to be a mom. That's all I could be. Philip didn't respond to medication. He started to hallucinate. By Sunday, after that first Thursday, he was brain dead. A month after Philip's organs were donated for transplant, the true cause of his death was discovered. While wakeboarding, tiny organisms called amoebas were traveling up Philip's nose into his brain. It was shocking, certainly, um, but in a way, you know, that had been in the back of my mind. Shocking because hospital lab tests didn't spot the elusive amoeba, even though doctors suspected it. Turns out good tests to detect it don't exist. We know very little about this organism. University of South Florida professor Dr. Dennis Kyle says even when it's found and treated, amoebic meningitis is 99% fatal. Of all the parasitic diseases, I would say this is undoubtedly the most neglected. So neglected, there was no money for research to find drugs to kill it. It's difficult to get funding through many sources to do work on, on a disease that people like to call rare. It's a misnomer, really, because there's so many of these amoeba in the water that there's un undoubtedly people are getting exposed. In this video from Dr. Kyle's lab, with the help of a microscope, you can see amoeba literally devouring brain cells. With no good targeted drugs to stop it, doctors are forced to use medications approved for completely different infections, a problem Dr. Kyle wants to change. It is a very exciting moment. With the help of funding from the NIH, this team is discovering new drugs that could become game changers. I was surprised and elated. I mean, our whole team was when we came up with these compounds that were 500-fold better than anything that is currently being used. But while science searches for a cure, amoeba season postcard, do's and don'ts. Sandra's focusing on education and prevention. Nothing can bring my son back. For us, things will never change, but for other people, there's still a chance. Sandra's asking us to sign an online petition to get the CDC to make the disease reportable, a big step in getting more funding. Now, most amoeba infections happen when water is forced up the nose, so Dr. Gomp advocates using nose plugs when swimming in fresh, untreated water. If you'd like more information or would like to sign the petition, we've got a link on our website.